Please welcome to the stage Executive Director of the Linux Foundation, Jim Zemlin. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Wow, we have a full house today. That's great to see. Uh, last year, we had this event in Austin, Texas, and we were still kind of all coming out of the pandemic, if you recall, for those of you who attended last year. You may have noticed I was absent last year, but I was very close to the venue in my hotel because I tested positive to co for COVID uh, that week and spent the entire week in an Austin hotel uh, recovering from COVID. So I think we all have a lot of... Uh, stories like that, um, and it's great to see that we're now kind of coming to the other side of this and uh, able to get back together uh, safely in a, a beautiful place like Vancouver. Um, we have all, all kinds of exciting things uh, happening this week. Uh, we have about 2,000 people here on site and uh, another 2,000 people joining us virtually, so hello for the folks online. I want to first start out by thanking our sponsors. Uh, I want to thank especially our diamond sponsors, uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, Discover, and uh, Google, who uh, really we couldn't do this without them. I'd also like to thank our platinum sponsors, uh, Open Search and Red Hat. Again, we could not do this without the support of our sponsors and all of you. I also really want to thank uh, our program committee chairs. Uh, you know, we have a, a sort of event of events here this week and uh, all these little conferences for different specialized areas of technology. And without our conference chairs to go through uh, the different talks that were submitted this year, of which we had a record number, uh, we really couldn't do that. So really th big thank you to the conference chairs. A couple of housekeeping notes uh, before we get started. Uh, our sponsor showcase is right next door, and uh, it will be open during lunch and daily at the end of keynote sessions. Go check it out over there. They've got all kinds of cool things I went over this morning. Uh, we have coffee breaks uh, each day around the conference center, a lot of lounge areas. Uh, please do take advantage of the uh, hallway track. Uh, the Wi-Fi, we think it's going to be stable and awesome uh, this week, uh, and so please, the information for the Wi-Fi is on your badge. Uh, today at lunchtime, we have a treat. We can take advantage of Ask the Expert sessions. Uh, today's hosts are Chris Anacek, Peter Brink, Rebecca Rumble, and Tracy Miranda. Uh, these are folks who are experts in things like cloud computing. Uh, it's a great uh, opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one after a long time of being apart from many of you. Uh, that is at the Ocean Foyer in level one uh, at 1.40 p.m. Uh, we also have a women and non-binary in open source lunch today. Uh, this is open to all attendees who identify as women or non-binary. Uh, you don't need to pre-register, so feel free uh, to uh, join that. The location and time are on the schedule. Uh, also, this evening, don't miss our attendee reception and uh, booth crawl. Uh, this evening, this is at the sponsor showcase, which starts at the close of the breakout sessions this afternoon. We also have more. Uh, there's two book signings today. So Cory Doctorow, who you'll hear from this morning, will be signing books at the uh, morning break in the sponsor showcase. Uh, and at the reception tonight, uh, please meet the authors and editors of the recently released Open Source Law Policy and Practice uh, book. Uh, Nithya Ruff, who is the chair of the Linux Foundation, Steve Wally from Microsoft, McCoy Smith, Amanda Brock of Open UK, Kate Stewart, also of the Linux Foundation, uh, will be there to sign those books, so please go and pick up a copy uh, this evening. Uh, finally, I want to remind everyone we have an event code of conduct uh, that everyone attending has agreed to abide uh, and that we will enforce. So, you know, in short, everyone should feel welcome. Uh, please treat everyone with respect uh, and professionalism. And if you have any concerns at all, uh, please go to the registration desk uh, staff. There are Linux Foundation staff with uh, marked uh, shirts on that you can go uh, and talk to if you have any concerns at all. So I have a few uh, additional announcements about things that are going on around uh, the Linux Foundation. 
And you know, it, it's, it's been an interesting year in that we've heard a lot in the news about, oh, there's some kind of looming recession, and I'm not an economist, so I can't really comment on whether or not uh, the macroeconomic conditions are out there are good versus bad, uh, but it has been a tough time in tech. You know, we've seen uh, rounds of layoffs and sort of company after company, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, cost cutting. I know I've spoken to some folks who really wanted to be here today, but there's travel restrictions at their organization. They couldn't make it in person. They're here virtually instead. But I don't know if it's that open source is counter cyclical to these kind of things, but around the Linux Foundation and then just in the communities that I talk with day in, day out, we're kind of seeing a reverse trend. We really had our best first quarter ever at the Linux Foundation. You know, for those of you who were in Amsterdam, uh, the KubeCon event was sold out with a several thousand person wait list. Community participation is up across most Linux Foundation projects, uh, and uh, we're just seeing new projects being created and new organizations who've never participated in open source uh, joining our communities as well. So, I am seeing some hope where there's darkness, and I hope that that trend will continue uh, throughout the rest of the year. And to that end, I have a few announcements this morning of some exciting new things that are going on uh, at the Linux Foundation. The first is uh, a, a release uh, from our Open 3D Foundation of their latest Open 3D engine. So this is a AAA gaming engine. Uh, and it, it's entirely open source, includes new authoring experiences in the game, robotic simulation development, new multiplayer sample game that can help folks accelerate the development of, uh, again, a triple A uh, game experience. Uh, they just wrapped up their O3DE jam over the weekend, uh, where developers got to play with uh, some open source uh, gaming code. And so I really look forward to Here's a quick video to just show you some of the capabilities of the O3D engine. So go check this out at our O3D uh, Foundation, 3DE Foundation website. And again, this is sort of uh, the first of its kind, which is really a triple A first class, uh, totally open source uh, gaming engine. Um, the second announcement I have is from our Linux Foundation Europe organization. Uh, today they've announced their new advisory board. This includes 20 leading European organizations within the EU, uh, UK, and beyond. Uh, as you all know, the Linux Foundation announced last year our Linux Foundation Europe entity. This is a separate uh, but sister entity of our organization that is located and incorporated in Europe and serves the European community. Uh, the advisory board is gonna play a crucial role in stewarding the Linux Foundation Europe's growth, uh, with just, which just hit 100 member organizations. Uh, so uh, I think uh, Gabriele Colombro is here this week, and if you have uh, questions about the Linux Foundation EU, he can answer them. Uh, next, the Continuous Delivery Foundation has released its fourth annual State of Continuous Delivery Report. Uh, highlights of the report include uh, a continued increase in adoption of DevOps practices uh, and testing applications for security measures now being the second most popular DevOps related activity. Uh, go ahead and check out that report on the CD Foundation website. Fourth, I have more good news from the OpenJS Foundation. Meta has joined as a top level member, a gold member with a commitment to help build more diverse open source communities. You know, uh, OpenJS not only is getting support from industry, but they recently received an investment from the Sovereign Tech Fund to deliver security and maintenance to policies and practices. This is the largest one-time government support investment ever for a Linux Foundation project. This came out of the European Union. Uh, OpenJS also held their JavaScript Landia Individual Supporter Program Awards, which showcased the incredible creativity, uh, diversity, and energy in the OpenJS community. It's impressive to see the OpenJS community responding to 
uh, things that they need to, to work on around security, but also continuing the innovation and support of the community members and making sure that it's a diverse and exciting group. Next, our SPDX uh, organization has announced the SPDX 3.0 release candidate. This is the first in a series of releases that will lead to the general availability of SPDX 3.0. Software build of materials is a really critical part of helping us to improve our collective cybersecurity. This is, uh, allows people to easily understand what software they're running in production and when there are problems with that software, be able to quickly locate it and remediate any problems. I'd like to encourage the software build of materials tooling community to provide feedback to the specification model and profiles of this SPDX 3.0 candidate. Uh, so they can take your feedback into account for the full SPDX 3.0 release. Uh, next, we have uh, an announcement around our Open Source Security Foundation. OpenSSF has welcomed Omkar Arasnam as its new general manager. Omkar is a cybersecurity and technical risk management pro with more than 25 years of experience leading organizations around the world. We are super excited to have him in our growing Open Source Security Foundation community. And finally, what a mouthful. Uh, we have one last uh, update, which is our Linux Foundation uh, research and Linux Foundation training and certification organization have recently released a new state of tech talent report. This is a survey that we did which focused on uh, the challenges of acquiring and retaining tech talent. Uh, two quick highlights. Upskilling is becoming central to recruitment and more organizations are seeing value in investing in their existing staff as a way to increase retention while addressing the challenges of finding and onboarding new hires. Uh, we are happy that we're now uh, working with so many organizations to help them train their staff in cloud technologies, in things like embedded systems and more, uh, and this report certainly validates that that work continues to grow. So check out that report's finding through the QR code on screen. And with that mouthful, I will end our many announcements. Uh, the Linux Foundation has gotten large enough that I could go on all day with all the cool activity that's going on, but uh, I think you want to hear from some of our speakers first.